This is the ESA News Desk. I'm at Highland, and uh, the ESA News Desk, of course, is the perfect place to talk about the Energy Storage Association with the new incoming uh, chairman, Craig from our uh, from Res. Uh, okay. Congratulations, first of all, on uh, being the incoming chairman. Great, and congratulations as well. The Brad Roberts Achievement Award for RES. Mm -hmm. Some thoughts, if you would. Well, we're very excited uh, to be the recipient of the Brad Roberts Award. Uh, Brad was a tremendous individual. I had the uh, good fortune of uh, uh, getting to know him uh, during um, um, the uh, few, uh, first several years that I was involved with ESA. Uh, Brad was a great guy, um, very uh, 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 a fantastic engineer. Uh, and a great advocate for the storage industry. And SNC Electric uh, did a, a great job in supporting Brad and his efforts with ESA. Um, he was not only a great engineer, but also a fantastic individual. Um, did uh, Left his mark uh, in a positive way in his community at large and his family. And uh, I was also happy to, uh, Brad and I shared the same alma mater, University of Florida, so both engineering graduates from there, so another personal connection. But at RES, we're uh, very excited. Um, and uh, proud to be recognized by the industry in that way. For not only the things, uh, the projects that we've done in the industry, but also the support that RES has given to ESA uh, through its uh, uh, participation in the leadership circle, its uh, sponsorship of the uh, annual conference last year, which was held in Denver, and then the time they've allotted to me to be able to participate on the board, and then the executive committee and now as chair for this coming year. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, becoming the chair. Uh, you're uh, stepping into some big shoes, uh, or footprints yeah. as it were, yeah. probably leaving behind. So uh, give us some thoughts on uh, sort of your vision. Where would you like to see yeah. uh, this, this mantle go? Yeah, well this is uh, only the, the fifth year that ESA has uh, actually had a, a full-time employee. So our first full-time employee was at the end of 2013, early 2014. So uh, you know, my goal now that the uh, association, we have Kelly on board, uh, we've grown the staff, uh, and we're going to continue to grow the staff in this coming year, but really at a high level to bring the board into more of a really supportive role rather than a participatory role within the management of the association. So, uh, you know, to, to build that momentum, Praveen did a fantastic job, uh, you know, bringing Kelly on board and helping uh, the association through, through that, uh, uh, through that next phase of its growth. And to continue that on, I think the board's really gonna have to be reaching out and building more excitement, you know, continuing to build the excitement among the membership, grow, helping grow the membership and enhancing the member value. So it's three of the specific things with that. Um, uh, as number one, we're gonna be releasing our first five-year strategic plan for the association, and this is in line with the vision document, 35 gigawatts by 2025. So this strategy, uh, five-year strategy, will help us lay out the tactics to, to getting there. And so very excited about that. The second thing is, is to uh, help uh, augment the events going on. We really want to make those experiential, impactful, and encompassing. So I think the board is uh, going to be uh, uh, instrumental in, in helping staff uh, you know, bring the events to that next level. And then the, the third thing is just the, uh, the member value itself and helping uh, more of those uh, one-on-one -on -one and uh, impactful uh, interfaces with key decision makers that, uh, you know, ultimately the different clients that uh, every member has throughout the value chain. Are you seeing the growth? Are you seeing what's necessary? I mean, you talk about a five-year plan, and when you uh -huh. think about that, just two years after that is the goal for 2025. Right. So, so the the scope, it's not it's not far away. Yeah, exactly. It's not. And to Kelly's credit, she's actually taken that five-year plan and, and kind of had those two extra years as a stretch to go on to 2025. And um, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been a big job, but it's been one of the things that's really kind of helped her get calibrated in uh, TSA and I think, uh, you know, start ramping up things very quickly. So, you know, the growth in the association has been, you know, very remarkable, We're continuing on the path. And we just see right now, I, I think with um, the, uh, you know, I guess more of the uh, encompassing uh, planning processes that are going out there amongst utility and regional planners about uh, tr transforming to more and more, uh, you know, and eventually 100% renewable type systems out there that storage is a key element in that. We're seeing that with the growth of the trade association, but also it's important to to make sure that, you know, we, um, uh, uh, the policies and other things are staying in line with that. So the work that the, the policy group here at ESA has done with Jason Bergwin and Nitsan Goldberger at both the uh, federal and, and uh, regional level as well as the state level has been part of that tactical plan, making sure these markets open up for the benefit of, uh, of all the members. 
What about headwinds? I mean, uh, obviously uh, there has uh, been a change in administrations. Mm -hmm. There's been different things that have been happening that uh, perhaps are not as conducive as they were for renewables and some of the yeah. other aspects uh, of the industry. So, so there's um, a bit of a battle still ahead. Yeah. And so, so you how, how do you gear up for something like that and get the membership to, to really you know call the people that need to be called right. and make sure the legislative hotline is lit up? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think there's a couple things. I mean, there, there have been a couple, um, uh, you know, I guess developments, you know, or, you know, the way things have, you know, changed. I hesitate to use that word. I'd say just more how things have developed um, that, you know, seem like they would be headwinds. But I, I think it's really encouraging to say that I think um, I, I don't see it really uh, impeding the growth by much, if at all. Um, one of the things uh, I'm pretty excited about being an employee of Res, we're one of the largest uh, renewable players out there. Um, last year we put in a gigawatt of wind. We have slightly less than 10% of the wind in the United States is Res projects, um, either that we developed or, or built and constructed uh, for others. Um, so we just have now gone north of 10 gigawatts of total resources in North America for wind, solar, and storage. Uh, we have one of the largest and most diverse storage portfolios out there. And now we're seeing the ability to really integrate storage with renewables um, based on you know, those combined set of expertises. And I think that's the, the value of that and how that goes into with this current administration goals of having resiliency and having reliability be a critical infrastructure, being able to withstand you know, uh, cyber attack and cyber security, storage's role and renewables role because they're, you know, uh, you don't have any logistical fuel issues with those kinds of resources, so and and the cost curves are still declining. So that's where, even though the developments necessarily on the, um, haven't seemed to be ideal, they're just not enough to impede the progress there because there's so much momentum behind it. I hear on the floor walking around people saying, you know, if, if I don't come to ESA Con, I, I'm really afraid I'm going to miss something because right. things are changing so rapidly. Exactly. And ESA is right in the middle of it all, yes. helping make that change occur. Yes. And uh, yeah, and, and it's just getting more and more momentum. I mean, it is by far and uh, away the largest exhibit uh, for energy storage, uh, you know, on the planet, I guess, and you know, on a yearly basis, you know, every April. So next year it will be in Phoenix. Um, that will draw, you know, uh, a, a different regional crowd, but you know, a lot of the same folks here. You know, I, I'd say, you know, we hope to grow the uh, exhibit floor by at least 25% between uh, this year and next year, and conference attendees by, you know, another. 20 percent get you know north of 2200 people so um, it's uh, it's very exciting times and it's just you know this is where people are coming to be able to to find out what's going on in the industry understand uh, where those trends are going and you know uh, where they should be looking for over the next 12 months congratulations uh, to res okay. uh, on the Brad Roberts award okay. and uh, congratulations to you on uh, going into the, uh, the the chairmanship role and uh, We'll see how everything continues uh, into Phoenix uh, 2019. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate it. And this is the ESA News Desk.